Okay, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai for giving us this knowledge, this truth, this understanding, especially in these times. So, I'm going to do a slight commentary on this video here. This was put up by um, Elder Pastor. I think it might be a re upload of a video that was put up by the brothers from Baltimore, GMS Baltimore. The name of the video is entitled Former One West Dude Tells Why He Fell Out the Truth. And that's the dude right there. The dude that you're looking at right here. And um, like I said, I'm going to do a little slight commentary on this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. <clears throat> okay, now you said you was uh, uh, part of the... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it was I, I, I see you PK right, back right. in the late 90s. Right, well, you before, 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 before the right. different splits and whatever. Okay. Before what? Times of Dakia went his way. Okay. Yohanna went his way. Tahar, he was in uh, was the House of David, if I'm yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, and it okay. just went all over GOCCC, and it's just like. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, I left. I left before, like, they say, like, the prophecy was supposed to happen in 2000. Yeah, right? that's what, yeah. And, and, and see, that, that, that messed a lot of people up, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. you know. Now, we've been saying that. You know, we've been saying that the uh, year 2000, when it came and went, a lot of individuals got offended and fell out the truth because, um, beginning with, High Priest Ariah, and it wasn't just Elder Apostle Taha who taught the year 2000 prophecy. All of us did. It was based upon the teaching that High Priest Ariah taught that after the year 2000, America is going to be destroyed. Now, what fueled him to teach that was the, what was written in Hosea the book of Hosea, after two days, that was the, uh, bear with me for a minute, that was the um, scripture which fueled High Priest Ariya to teach that. After two days, it is right here, the book of Hosea, the sixth chapter. <clears throat> I'll start at the first verse. It says, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. Through what? Through this knowledge, right? After two days will he revive us. After two days. Now, a day to the Lord, or, yeah, a day to the Lord is to us a thousand years. In other words, a thousand years to us is as one day to the Lord. Let me show you that. Second Peter 3 and 8, I think it is. Yeah, it is right here. And there's another one in Psalms, somewhere in Psalms, where it pretty much says the same thing. A uh, thousand years to us is as one day to the Lord. So, Second Peter 3 and 8, but beloved... Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So based upon that, we know in Hosea 6 and 2, it's not talking about an actual 24-hour day when it says two days. It's actually a dark saying, and the, and the Bible is filled with those, man. The Bible is filled with dark sayings and allegories and symbols and metaphors. So we know that after two days, meaning after 2,000 years from the time, you know, Yahweh Shai came on the planet Earth, after two days will he revive us. So we've been revived through this knowledge, through this truth. 
you know, we, we've been, as a matter of fact, let's look up that word revive. Let's define that word. <clears throat> Excuse me. Revive. It says restore to life or consciousness. And how did that happen to us? Through these scriptures. Okay? Through these scriptures, we were woken up. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example of that. Um, let's go to the book of... Uh, First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Now, I didn't prepare a list, so I'm just going to, according to the Holy Spirit. So it says, will he revive us, right? When you revive, meaning you're woken out of sleep. What was our sleep? Well, we didn't know who the hell we were. We didn't know who the Heavenly Father is or his only begotten son. Truly, no, because we were involved in all these other religions that really didn't teach us the truth. I don't care what it is, Catholic, Baptist, Pentecostal, Islam, all those religions are false, man. Uh, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and the sixth verse, it says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Yeah, because we've been revi revived through this knowledge through this truth while the majority of our people are sleeping. They don't know what the hell's going on. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And and that's the thing with this guy here. He stopped watching. Okay, he stopped watching. When he went back into the world, as he, as he freely admitted, he stopped watching. You're supposed to continue watching. Okay, and when I read the scripture in Luke, the 12th chapter, you're going to see that. No matter what, you were supposed to continue watching. In other words, when this guy became illuminated and he got the truth, no matter what happened with the splits and all that, you know the truth. And you know you're supposed to teach the truth. You're supposed to keep teaching the truth, no matter what. You know, you've been, you've been given a, a gift. You're supposed to use it, utilize it. Until the one who gave you the gift comes and peradventure, if you part of his elect, he will, he will gather you up. He will, he will deliver you. That is, that is the, uh, um, that is the understanding of the truth. Okay. But he didn't do that. All right. So again, in other words, he was woken up and he went right back to sleep. Okay. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, see? But let us watch, so we got to constantly watch and be sober, be clear-minded. What's an example of being clear-minded? Constantly having this truth in your mind, all right? Living according to this truth, all right? See, we're no longer of, of this world. Once we come into this truth, we're really no longer of this world, man. He never was to begin with. Even Yahweh Shai said that in his prayer. He said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So the true elect, they're really not of this world. So they really can't go back to this world. The true elect, no matter what, <coughs> excuse me, no matter what, they're going to stay in this truth. They're going to teach this truth because they're not of the world anyway. Okay. Uh, and he's an example, this dude, he's an example of the scripture where it is written, many are called, few are chosen. See, he, he was called, but evidently he wasn't chosen. Now, he could see this video and um, maybe repent and go back into teaching, but I doubt he's going to do that. But there is such, such a thing called a prodigal son, okay? There is such a thing called a prodigal son. You know, um, a guy could repent and you know and say, you know what, I've been 
I've been going off. Let me get back into doing this work. You know, there's always an exception to the rule. But the general rule is, if you're illuminated, as a matter of fact, let's get that. Hebrews, uh, bear with me for a minute. Hebrews 6, I think it is. Yeah, the book of Hebrews, the 6th chapter, the 4th verse. It says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, like the brother you see to the left of the screen, and have tasted of the heavenly gift. And he, he seemed like he seemed like a, cool, like a cool dude, but, you know, if you come into this truth and you fall out the truth, in the eyes of Yahweh Shem you ain't cool. <laughs> you know, you're actually a, an enemy. You, to put it bluntly, you're an enemy to Yahweh Shai because you you've been enlightened. Once you've been enlightened, you know. Once you've been enlightened <laughs> and you fall out, you become an enemy automatically to Yahweh Shai. As it is written, it's best you never known this this truth than to come into it, know it, and then fall out of it. Okay? <laughs> for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift <laughs> and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of the heavenly Father and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Now, the scripture said it's impossible. All right, so that's the general rule. The general rule is if you come into this thing, you learn it, and then you fall out for whatever reason. Hey, it's impossible to be renewed. This is what the Apostle Paul said in his letter. All right. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Now, why is that? Seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of the Heavenly Father fresh. Yeah, the Heavenly Father sent the Heavenly Father Yahweh sent his son Yahweh Shai to die for us Israelites, beginning with the elect on the cross. Alright, and that's how we got this knowledge by Yahweh Shai sacrificing himself on the cross. So for us to get this knowledge and then treat it like it's not holy, you know, treat it like it's not worth anything, that's a disrespect to Yahweh Shai. That's a diss to Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai ain't going to take that lightly, man. He had to look at all the, the pain and humiliate, uh, humiliation and shame he had to endure on the cross just for us to get this knowledge. So, that shows lack of gratitude, man. That speaks volumes when a guy comes in and just falls out. <laughs> you know? Let's read the sixth verse again. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of the Most High afresh, and put him to an open shame. And Yahweh ain't going to take too kindly to that. Especially the scriptures tell us that Yahweh is an austere man. So he's not going to take too kindly to a guy who comes in, learns his secret, and then falls right back out in the world and acts like his secret never meant anything. A secret that he had to die for on the cross for us to receive. Uh-uh. It ain't going to go too, too well with that individual, man. Simply put. Bear me for a minute. All right, so I'm trying to get back my scripture here. Phone ain't acting right. All right, so um. Let's go back to the video. They only teach them, they only in the Western Hemisphere. 
Okay, now you saying you was uh, uh, part of the... Yeah, well, I would have Yeah, yeah, it was I, I, I see you PK. Right. Back in the late 90s. Right. Well, you told me before, before the different splits and whatever. Okay. Before what? Times of Dockey went his way. Okay. Yohanna went his way. Tahar, he was in, uh, the House of David, if I'm yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, and it okay. just went all over GOCCC, and it's just like. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, I left. I left before, like, they say, like, the prophecy was supposed to happen, 2000. Yeah, whatever. that's what, yeah. And, and, and see, that, that, that messed a lot of people up, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You now, um, years ago, uh, when we had the school in uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, right before, I think it was a week before it became the year 2000, Apostle Tahar had called the school, and he, you know, he, he said to us, you know, America ain't going to be destroyed before the year 2000. <laughs> and we were like, uh, yeah, because <laughs> it was clearly evident because there was a lot of prophecies that had to still be fulfilled. All right. And um, when he called us and told us that, we we're like, yeah, well, you know, we just got to carry on. But as you clearly see a lot of guys and he's he, this guy is a testament of that a lot of guys were offended and fell out the truth all right now one scripture that elder pastor brought out behind that was uh and he's the one that brought it out uh bear with me for a minute uh, let me get uh I think it's Luke, Luke 17, yeah, Luke 17 and somewhere around there, yep, this is it, now, <clears throat> when that happened, because we actually put up the video, you've seen the video of us uh, and we were in Stamford, Connecticut, and uh, we were teaching that, that America is going to, we had, we were saying things like less than 500 days. We actually had it on, on, we actually used to write it on the, on the blackboard in the school in Bridgeport, Connecticut, less than 500 years, America will be destroyed, less than such and such. And like I said, a week before the year 2000 came in, Pastor Tar called the school and said, you know, it ain't going to happen. America ain't going to be destroyed before the year 2000. Now, we were a little disappointed, to say the least, because, you know, we want to see the destruction of this place. But we had to deal with reality. And the reality was that, <laughs> that America wasn't going to be destroyed before the year 2000. It is we're in the year 2022 and we're still here. So... That offended a lot of dudes, man. A lot of dudes got offended behind that. And they used that. Some some guys used that as an excuse to stop uh, being involved in the ministry. To stop doing the work. Okay? And some guys were generally offended. Like this guy here. Alright? But I think around that time, Elder Pastor brought out the scripture here, which made complete sense. I'm about to read it to you, Luke 17 and 22. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man. Now, the, the day of the Son of Man is when America is going to be destroyed. All right. The day of the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai, is going to be when America is destroyed. Because when Yahweh Shai comes, he's coming to deliver his elect and to destroy this society. Case in point, to destroy America. Okay? So, like it says here, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. 
So that's exactly what happened with this year 2000 thing. We decided to see the Son of Man come back and destroy this place, and we didn't see it. And like I said, it was Elder Apostol who brought out that scripture. He was the first that I heard him bring it out, and when he brought it out, immediately, immediately it made sense to us. Yeah, damn, that vehicle is extra loud, man. Anyway, um, the 23rd verse, and they shall say to you, see here or see there, go not after them nor follow them. For as the light, lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the coming, or so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai is coming with great pomp. Okay, great pomp. It's going to be Yahweh Shai and the angels coming back. In other words, when Yahweh Shai comes back, the whole world will know about it. It's going to be a worldwide event. And it is 22 years later and we're still waiting. But that's the key. We're waiting. You're supposed to wait. No matter what, you're supposed to wait. All right, so that's what he didn't do. Let's listen some more. You, know, you expect this to happen. They drilling this in your head that right, right. 2000, 2000, Christ going to come. It's going to be a new kingdom, right. blah, blah, blah. And How long did Noah it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's, just, it's just another day. How long was Noah out there? Yeah, well, I just read the scripture in Luke 17. Right? The days will come when you'll desire to see the day of the Son of Man, Yahweh Shah, and you shall not see it. So that's what happened with the uh, 2000 thing. And, and you know, uh, that was like a great comfort to us when Pastor brought out that scripture, man. That was a great comfort to us. That made sense. to said, oh, well, see. Okay. I, I, I can't remember how many the, the exact it's years. It's a long time, so, yeah. you know, you got to suffer. But he didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't give an exact date. That's the thing. Ariad gave an exact date of, of when it was going to happen. 2001, I mean, January 1st, 2001. Expect for the ships and, you know. Well, he, he said, no, well, he said, uh, High Priest Ari, I said, America's going to be destroyed before the year 2000. That's what we were teaching. I don't know about the, the exact date type thing, but we were teaching that America, and it wasn't just Elder Apostle Todd that was teaching it. All of us were teaching it at One West. It was, it was, it was a staple of our doctrine that America's gonna be destroyed before the year 2000. And it was based upon Hosea, the sixth chapter, the second verse, after two days will he revive us, in the third day he will lift us up. It was based upon that. And then, you know, the scripture in 2 Peter 3 and 8, where a day to, to the Heavenly Father is a thousand years to us. So it said, after two days will he revive us, in the third day he shall lift us up. All right, maybe I'll do a video on Hosea 6 and 2, uh, go into it a little more. But that was the scripture that I, Brisari, I used to prove America was going to be destroyed before the year 2000, okay? So would that, make, yeah, would that make him a false prophet? Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you, if, if you, if you predict something that don't come true, what happened? You're supposed to get the... Now, a lot of people say that, but the brother's going to use the, the um, account of... Uh, Jonah was Jonah a false prophet and Jonah said Nineveh was going to be destroyed he preached he actually preached that but Nineveh repented and they weren't destroyed in that time eventually they were destroyed when you go into the history of uh, written in the book of Tobit eventually Nineveh was destroyed but Nineveh wasn't destroyed in the day or in the time that Jonah said it would be. So did that make Jonah a false prophet? You know, no, it didn't. So he just said that um, High Priest Arya, Elder High Priest Arya, is a false prophet based upon the year 2000 thing. But that's not necessarily so. There's a scripture where it says, hardly do we guess or right, I think. Let me see if I can find it. it. Might be it. Okay. It 
might be in the Apocrypha. Book of Wisdom of Solomon, the ninth chapter. Let's get that. Wisdom of Solomon, the ninth chapter. Around the sixteenth verse. Start the 14th verse. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 14. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, and the earthy tabernacle weighed down the mind that museth upon many things. Yeah, we catching hell in this body, man. That's why our bodies got to be changed according to scripture. Now here's the point. It says, and hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon the earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us, right? With labor. But the things that are in heaven, who have searched out? Hey, there's a scripture where it says, not even Yahushai knows what day He's going to come back. Only the Father knows. Okay? Now, there are signs. What happened was, High Priest Ariah, he got a little carried away with the prophecy in Hosea 6 and 2. The prophecy in Hosea 6 and 2 says, we will be revived. And then, as you read on, it says, in the third day, we shall be raised up. So, we're in the night of the third day. So sometime in the third day, we're going to be raised up. Okay, so we're in the night of the third day right now. This is why in the book of Lamentations, it says, cry ye out in the night. Right? The day of the third day will be when Yahweh Shai comes. He's coming to bring the day. He's that bright morning star that comes up during the day okay the night or the day begins at night and then you have the day part of the day when the sun comes up as a matter of fact the sun the sun is about to come up now as i'm doing this video it's uh, 6 36 in the morning okay so again the 16th verse and hardly do we guess or right at things that are upon the earth or upon earth and with labor do we find the things that are before us but the things that are in heaven who have searched out and thy counsel who have known except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. See? So honestly, now we got a better understanding of Hosea 6 and 2. And like I said, I might do a video on Hosea 6 and 2. But that was one of the main scriptures that High Priest Ariar used to make such a bold statement that America is going to be destroyed before the year 2000. Okay? But he didn't have the full understanding of Hosea 6 and 2. And, you know, as a matter of fact, when we go back to the video, right? The, uh, these brothers made a, uh, they made a good point. We don't know, we don't actually know what year or time we're in. We're told that we're in the year 2022. But the scriptures tell us that this man will think to change, uh, let me see, Daniel 7, is it? Uh, Daniel. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Daniel 7 and 25, I think it is. 
Yeah, Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And we, <laughs> we're totally worn out here. And think to change times and laws. So this, this man has changed the time. Okay. Be honest with you, we don't know what year we're really in. Because over the years, this man has changed, changed the times, like the scripture says. And they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the divided of time. Okay? There's a, and you can do this uh, in Google, there's a, uh, sometime in around the, what was it, 1400s? I'm not sure, I, I forgot exactly what year where they um they had shortened the month by 11 days something like that i think it was pope gregory anybody finds that information they can put it in the comment section all right and and what about daylight savings time you know what about something called a, a, a leap year this devil has, has shortened the days shortened the time <clears throat> so we don't know exactly what year we're in. That's the point. All right. So you have to factor in that, you know. But we know that we're close to Yahweh Shai returning. And a major sign is that that uh, RFID. That's why that RFID CHIP, that RFID CHIP is so important, man. Because once they make that thing mandatory, then that's it, man. This this place, uh, once Revelation 13 and 16 really comes into play, according to Scripture, because the Scriptures say he shall be as a madman sparing none, because he want to bring bring in his new world order. Uh, Revelation 12 and 12, he shall, the devil shall come down unto you with great wrath. Knowing that he have a short time. A short time for what? To enjoy his kingdom. So we know in those days, man, that any day now, Yahweh would be coming. That's a major sign. That's why Why you think we're so adamant on the CHIP, this MOTB? Because that's a major sign, man. Let's listen to some more of this. And he's he's right. According to the law, if you're a false prophet, Deuteronomy 13 and 5, you're supposed to receive death. But again, the scripture have said, hardly do we guess a right. And uh, you know, truth be told, High Priest Ari, I was just guessing. Concerning Hosea 6 and 2, he was just guessing. And now it's quite apparent that he was guessing. He didn't get the full understanding of Hosea 6 and 2. And not only him, we were all guilty of that because we were all, we were, we were all teaching it. All right? But the point I'm making in this video, and I'm going to bring out the scripture in Luke, no matter what, you're supposed to continue watching. Once you're illuminated to this truth, you're supposed to treat it as a precious gift. And you're supposed to continue watching and teach it. Doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. We're going to read the scripture in Luke, Luke 12, beginning at the 36th verse. But I just want to play a little more of this. Jordan prophesied that Nineveh was going to fall and didn't get it. You know, but eventually it did later on. Jordan prophesied that Nineveh was going to fall and didn't get it. You know, that's why the, uh, that's why the scriptures say uh, these people seeking a sign, but they were just getting the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, certain about Jonah. Uh, yeah, they seek of a sign, but the signs are there, man. The signs of Yahweh Shai's coming is there. And one of the major signs of Yahweh Shai's coming is the mandatory implantation of that RFID chip, man. That's a major sign. Okay, I mean, when that happens, then <laughs> Yahweh Shai is right around the corner. Absolutely. How do we actually know that what year we I'm are? I'm just saying that. 
if they change the times and the, and, the, and the seasons, you know, with this Gregorian calendar. And I just, yeah, I just read that scripture. How do we know uh, what year we're actually in? When it's a fact, Esau has changed the times and laws. Daniel 7 and 25. So we really don't know what year we're in. We're told we're in the year 2022. But we could, you know, we could be in a, a, a year that's more close to 2000. Like the scriptures say, after two days, and the third day will raise us up. You know, it's just a thought, you know. We don't know what year we're actually in. Because this man has changed times and laws. That's the point. How do we know we ain't in 1999 now? What's, what, 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 what year is it in the Hebrew calendar? Uh, now, he brought out a good point. What year is it in the Hebrew calendar? But again, we just simply do not know. We simply do not know, man. Hardly do we guess aright. Wisdom of Solomon, the ninth chapter. Now, some things we know for certain. But some things we honestly don't know. Now, we do know that when Esau make this CHIP mandatory, under the penalty of death, when he tries to bring in his so-called New World Order, really puts the hammer down, that's when Yahweh Shai and the angels are going to come, man. Because if they don't, there will be no flesh left to be saved. The prophecy says that this man is going to go, like, he's going to go wild. He's going to go crazy. Remember, he's the harbinger of death. His blessing was the sword. So he's going to go crazy trying to ex uh, uh, establish his new world order. Part of one of the uh, the tenets of his new world order is population reduction, man. He wants to reduce the population to what? Under 500 million. That's pursuant to the Georgia Guidestone. So that's one of the tenets of the new world order. That's why so many people are dropping dead, man, because this man wants population reduction. Okay, so if Yahweh I don't come back with the angels, there'll be no flesh left to be saved. All right, so. Five, it's like 5,600 5, souls, such and such, according to the uh, Hebraic calendar, right? So, I mean, you know, we don't know. We don't, we don't know. No we don't man knows. I mean, the I mean, hour, I mean, it's been, yeah, every, 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 every society. But he does say, change, 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 he does say he will give signs of his coming, like yeah. you said, that eclipse. Yep. Well, and the major sign is that RFID, you know what, the mark of the beast. Well, uh, yeah, after that, well, a lot of crazy stuff was happening, man. The hurricanes Science. back to back. Science. Yeah, the yeah. 8.5 in Mexico, so I'm like, damn. So you know that, so what are you doing? Are, are you, with the knowledge that you were given, with the gift you were given, are you using it? Are you utilizing it? No, you're not. You just went back into the world. You take a look at this guy, man, to the left, you'd never know he was in the truth. You know, doesn't look like he has his beard on his face. Looked like he shaved it off. Probably had a beard when he was in the truth. Probably. <laughs> Man, maybe, 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 this maybe this shit is real. Maybe this shit is real. That's all I mean. <laughs> well, let me give you a scripture. Maybe this shit is real. You know what scripture comes to mind? James. A double-minded man is on James the first chapter. Around the what? The... The 18th verse, I think it is. It's in the book of James, the first chapter. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. See? So this guy was never stable. All right? The guy to the left. Far left of your screen. He was never stable. That's one of the reasons why he fell out the truth. He's double-minded. What did Yahweh Shai say about the mind? If your heart be single, which is your mind... Then your whole body is full of light, meaning you co you concentrating on one thing. You're not double minded. Yeah, I wish I said that. So we're seeing signs of why this guy fell out the truth. Man, because when that year 2000 prophecy, honestly, we gotta tell you, you keep the camera on. You, we gotta tell you that um, you were supposed to still endure, man. Exactly. You know, you wasn't supposed to just just say Christ came, the Christ didn't come, so the hell with it. You were supposed to still endure my man you can't get out of it man no matter what you ain't got no excuse let's go to it and then i'm gonna wrap this video up the book of luke 12 now when i watched that video this scripture immediately came to me luke 12 and 36 the part where it says be like servants waiting 
unto their Lord. You know how we're supposed to be? We're supposed to be like a, a, a dog. You know, like a dog, no matter what, it, the dog waits for its master. Okay, the, the dog waits for its master no matter what. All right, you could leave the house and uh, leave your dog and five minutes later, you come back to the house. The dog will jump on you like you've been gone for, <laughs> for, for decades. That's the nature of a dog. That's the nature we're supposed to have for Yahweh Shai. We're supposed to be like a dog waiting for its master. Okay? Uh, Luke 12 and 36. We're going to read 36 to 48. It says, And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he, when he will return from the wedding, which is a metaphor, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Right. In other words, uh, when Yahweh Shai comes back, he'll immediately gather his elect because they've been waiting for him. They're ready for him. Okay. They have that that mindset. They're looking for the Lord. They're, they're, they've been doing the work that the Lord told them to do. There's a scripture where it says, blessed, I think it might be in the same, well, yeah, it's the very next verse. Blessed are those servants, blessed are those servants, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Now that guy, come on, that guy ain't watching. All right. Uh, this, this dude is not watching. He went back to sleep. Even though he's still considering because he's been enlightened, he was once enlightened. So he's seen what's happening in the world and he's been considering, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But he's in a double mind. All right? He's not doing the work. He's not going out there and teaching, which is what you're supposed to do. He's not making videos of edification and trying to enlighten the Lord's elect. He just went back into the world. Look at him. Look at the way he's dressed. You'd never know he was in the truth. Got his hat backwards. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And that is a metaphor for being delivered. And ultimately, there's a day when Yahweh Shai said that he will drink wine with us in the kingdom. All right, so it's going to be this big, big uh, uh, dinner, this big meal. And Yahweh Shai is going to drink wine with us, man. Check that out. Also, the prophet Ezra saw the day when Yahweh Shai will place crowns upon the heads of those that were faithful. Those that faithfully waited for him and did his work. Okay, remember what Yahweh Shai said. He said, my meat is to do the will of the Father that sent me and to finish his work. Yahweh Shai specifically said, finish his work. This guy didn't finish the work. All right. This guy didn't finish the work. Okay. He started, but he didn't finish. And you don't get, you don't get the uh, prize on, unless you finish the work, which means you got to continually do the work until the time comes when you're done doing the work. All right? You finish the work. Even the Apostle Paul said, he, he knows, um, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course at that time because the Apostle Paul is back to finish his course. And then he made a statement. He knows that the day will come when Yahweh Shai will place a crown on his head. For his obedience and being faithful. All right, let's keep reading. It says, And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. So what does that tell you, man? And if he shall come in the second watch, let's say the year 2000, he didn't come, right? Or come in the third watch, <laughs> So the point is, eventually he's going to come, man. 
And the point also is we're supposed to keep watching. And while we're watching, we're waiting, that is, we're doing the work that he told us to do. See? And if you shall come in the th second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come. Who's the thief? Yahushai. He said he's coming as a thief in the night. He's coming to steal away Esau's rulership, man. All right? So if you knew exactly what day, <laughs> this is why it's done this way. So the Heavenly Father, when he sent back his son, his son could catch certain dudes off guard. Okay? He's coming as a thief in the night. Now you know he's coming in the th as a thief in the night. The thief don't announce when he's coming. The thief don't say, okay, tomorrow night at 12 o'clock midnight, I'm going to come and break into your house and steal your goods. Come on, what thief, what thief does that? The thief wants to come into your house when you, when you least expect it, man. When you're not watching. That's why you got to constantly watch. Yahweh is coming as a thief in the night. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, like that guy, right? He would have watched and not suffer his house to be broken through. There you go. Be ye therefore ready also. This guy ain't ready, man. This, this, dude, this dude is not ready. He's not ready. Now, maybe he'll see this video and reconsider, right? Maybe. But we just read in Hebrews 6, it's impossible that those who are once lightened and treated the gift as, it, as if it was a, a thing not worthy, right? For him to be re-enlightened again. It's impossible. That's what the scriptures say. So his fate is with Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. See? So we got to be ready, man. We always got to be ready. And how do we always be ready? By, keep, by constantly watching. What are we watching? We're watching for the prophecies. The main prophecy we, we got our eyes locked on right now is this RFID chip. This RFID chip, this MOTB, okay? Because that's a major prophecy. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even unto all? And the Lord said, who, is the, who then is that faithful and wise steward? This guy ain't a faithful and wise steward. Okay, because he ain't watching. Whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household. Yeah, we're going to get paid, man. We're going to get paid, brothers, in, in ways that we, can, we couldn't possibly imagine. Whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he have. But if that servant, listen good, but if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, that's what this guy said, Ah, the year 2000 didn't happen. Nah, this is, this is all bullshit. My Lord delayeth his coming. <laughs> that's, that's basically what this guy said. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. Yeah, going back into the world. That's a metaphor for going back into the world. Right? And that's why he got his head down, his arms are folded. <coughs> he's, he's ashamed, man. Right? The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware. Remember, Yahusha is coming as a thief in the night. Now, what the Apostle Paul said is, to the Lord's elect, he ain't going to come as a thief in the in the night to the Lord's elect because we're constantly watching. All right? Let me show you 
what is that? There's Thessalonians. See? First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and the fourth verse. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day, the day of what? The day when the Lord comes back, should overtake you as a thief, because Yahweh Shai is coming as a thief in the night. Ye are all the children of light. We got this knowledge, we got this truth, and we're constantly watching. And more and more every day, we're getting more and more the understanding of these scriptures. Like the, uh, uh, I think it was the Apostle Paul who said, my inward man, though my outward man perish, my inward man is renewed day by day. What does it mean his inward man, meaning the spirit? We're being renewed by this knowledge. We're getting more and more and more and more understanding. Every day, man, we're getting more and more and more understanding. Like Yahweh Shai said, out of our belly is, is flowing rivers of living water, man. We're getting rivers and rivers and rivers of understanding because this knowledge is like water. Okay? Yahweh Shai clearly said, he will not leave us comfortless. You know, he will always be with us. That we, That's what Yahweh Shai told us. Okay? So again, the fourth verse, but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. See, we are not of night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Let us not sleep as do others. Like my man right here. My man is sleeping. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch. That's the key. Watch and be sober. And as you're watching, you're doing the work. That's what it means to be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith. And he lost his faith. If he had faith, he would be doing the work. Simply put. And love. He lost his love for Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. If he had love for Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, he'd be doing the work. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation, he lost his salvation because if he if he really believed in his salvation, he would constantly do the work, continue doing the work. All right. So let's get back to Luke and wrap this video up. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. And at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in the sunder, man, destroy him. Okay? If this guy don't wake up, and like I said, he seemed like a cool dude, but if you come into the truth and you will fall out the truth, you're not a cool dude. You're not cool in the sight of Yahweh Shem Yahushai. You're an enemy. And when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's going to kill you. Okay? Simply put, this is what I'm reading here. Uh, the Lord of that servant will come. See, we're supposed to fear Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Obviously, this guy has no fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in asunder, or cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Ooh. <laughs> And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. And he, he knows the will of the Lord. You, you've been enlightened, my dude. You know the will of the Lord. You know what time it is. You're supposed to be out there doing the work, man. That's what we were taught. That's why some of us continue doing the work. All right. You know, you knew what your Lord's will is. So, because you know you're going to be beaten with many stripes. Hey, like the old saying goes, blood in, blood out. <laughs> All right? <laughs> but he that knew not, those are the niggas out in the world that never really knew about this truth, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. So you you were you were given much, man. You came into the truth. You learned you learned the, these deep deep things of the truth. You got that good food. 
and you know, you treated it as if it was nothing. So you're going to be beaten with many stripes. So pretty much that's the video. Hopefully you found it edifying you brothers out there. And the, to this guy who fell out, man, you better fast. You better pray. Do what you got to do to get back in there. I don't think it's by coincidence you ran into them brothers. And it sounds like you've been... Uh, you've been... Uh, uh, thinking about the things that have been happening lately and you're getting scared as well you should be <clears throat> but the thing you thing you should do is is repent man fast pray do whatever you got to do to get back in the good graces of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai all right because there's nothing in the world man as the apostle Paul said the fashion of this world shall pass away so there you go the the, the new world is coming all right, so with that, on to the next one.